a little bit about me. I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota. I did child welfare practice for several years, and it was all in permanency planning. I uh, arranged for terminations of parental rights with five children. I came back to school um, to get my PhD because I was so concerned about lack of information about the issues that uh, families and children, about families and children in child welfare. And so the fact that I'm presenting to all of you means a great deal to me. And I am Tina Barr. I'm a PhD candidate in social work at the University of Minnesota. And um, my practice experience is mostly with juveniles who are involved in the juvenile justice system. But I also have experience working with children in foster care, um, children who experience sexual abuse who are foster children, as well as the families who adopted these children. Um, also have some research experience. And my dissertation area is in the um, area of wrongful convictions and exoneration. Uh, by definition, complex trauma is two or more serious adversities that children and or their parents have experienced and um, the adversities that they've experienced affect their development in a variety of ways. Later on we're going to talk about some of the longer term effects of trauma if it goes untreated. Uh, and uh, our job as social workers is to figure out how to help children and their parents deal with this complex trauma. But you can see that there are uh, any number of traumas uh, that children can have. You know, the most common ones that you probably deal with uh, is probably neglect. Neglect is the most common in all of, of uh, child welfare services and services in families and children. And one of the reasons there's so much issue with neglect is the parents often have their own issues and they all, often have complex trauma themselves and so they become preoccupied and emotionally unavailable to their children and they sometimes can be very aggressive toward their children as well either verbally or physically and sometimes sexually or they may fight in front of their children so all of these kinds of things affects children's development affects children's self-concept they feel shame they feel like uh, they're not good enough, um, and then they develop beliefs that maybe that's how you're supposed to act. Some of the shorter term effects of trauma are, are is an incapacity to, to regulate uh, emotions uh, because the trauma is uh, embedded in the body. Uh, Bessel van der Kolk has a wonderful um, new book called The Body Keeps the Score. And after you know, at least 30 years of research, he says we really have to help kids pay attention to what's going on in their bodies and help them to learn how to relax those parts of the bodies. And John Kabat-Zinn says the same thing. But when you have trauma, you can, you, there are some body sensations. People feel their trauma in their hearts, you know, in their stomachs, sometimes in, in back here, in their shoulders, in their heads. People can identify body sensations that are associated with trauma. Or when kids don't have the safety or secure relationships, they develop inner representations. And their inner representations that they are at risk of developing if they experience trauma is self-disgust, horror at themselves, and, and just a fearful expectations about what's going to happen to them, and shame. And shame is, there's something wrong with me, I'm not sure what it is. But well, they might even be able to say there's something wrong with me and they'll tell you what it is. It might not be true, but they think it's true. You experience a trauma and you think, okay, I really want to punch that kid right in the face. And so what you want the, the kids to be able to do instead of just acting that out is to think about the consequences. So a really important part of executive function is thinking about consequences. And when you do mindfulness-based practices, it does slow down that process that goes from stimulus to response, and the mindfulness-based practices give the kids a sense of, okay, if I do this, this is what's going to happen. So there are some other longer-term effects um, as well. And so have, has anyone heard of adverse childhood experiences or ACEs? Okay, 
So ACEs is um, a common term, it's a popular term now, but it's actually like the research on ACEs is a small part of the vast research on complex trauma. Uh, studies done with children in kindergarten show that children who have at least three um, experiences of adverse childhood experiences have more difficulty with language skills and academic performance. And then the research shows that with children and adolescents, these children who have multiple um, adverse experiences, they're more likely to um, be disengaged when in school, they're more likely to be absent from school, um, they're less likely to graduate from school, and they're less likely to get skilled jobs when they do graduate. And then studies that have followed um, young adults um, who have had experience, um, adverse experiences, show that they're more likely when they were juveniles to have been arrested and also to have been arrested for felony defenses. Um, when they've been involved with the, with the criminal justice and juvenile justice systems. And there are also quite a few health and mental health issues. Um, children with adverse childhood experiences are um, at higher risk of substance abuse, substance use, smoking, um, a host of health issues, uh, obesity, um, depression. And so there are quite a few long-term effects of trauma and adverse experiences. But one of the long-term effects of trauma is on physical health. And so I could talk to you about a case of a mother who had severe kidney problems by the time she was 30 years old. She also was, a, you know, was an alcoholic, and she died when she was 32 years old. Well, she had a history of complex trauma, and kidney disease and early death are one of the uh, outcomes associated with untreated complex trauma. This woman never had the safety and secure relationships. She never learned mindfulness-based practices. And so there was a terrible effect on her physical health. And I know that this turns around a lot of our assumptions in child welfare. I know they've turned around my assumptions. When I dealt with people who had what I now know is complex trauma, issues with self-regulation, executive function, and serious health problems, I just would say, what's the matter with them? You know, I didn't, couldn't go any further than that. And now, you know, 30 years later, there's so much research that helps us understand what these people have actually been through. And so we still have to protect the children, you know, from what the parents are un un unable to do, but at the same time, we can at least have more empathy for what parents have gone through. They're not doing it on purpose. I think in many ways we can say they're doing uh, the best they can.